Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are gonna be discussing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's region. Where are we gonna be exploring on our grand generation nine Pokemon adventure? A lot of the community has rallied around the idea that it's going to be Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. And I largely agree with them. So today we're gonna to discuss some of the things that Spain could provide to a Pokemon region and also why I think Spain makes a lot of sense. So with that being said, let's jump right into things. The Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal. This region of the world provides a lot of really interesting things for a Pokemon region to borrow from. The first thing I wanna discuss is the geography of the region, and we're gonna start with the most obvious thing. It is to the south of France, the Pokemon region equivalent of Kalos. This is gonna be really interesting for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because you could draw on a lot of similarities and a lot of callbacks to generation six in these games. Maybe you could even have a bunch of Kalos Pokemon who are native to the Northern areas of Scarlet and Violet to kind of call back to the idea that these two regions mirror each other and are next to each other. One of the interesting things about Kalos is that it's not really based on all of France. It's mostly based on Northern France. Back in generation six, there were a lot of theories going around the internet and a lot of speculation that we were going to get another game in the future that showed us Southern Kalos. There were some people that even theorized that it would come in a potential DLC package for Pokemon X and Y, because at the time, a lot of Nintendo games were finally dipping their toes into DLC. Now we know, of course, that it would take another two generations for the Pokemon company, for Game Freak, to go down the route of DLC but there was a lot of speculation at the time. This is essentially Southern Kalos. This is the region of the real world that is right below the Pokemon region is equivalent of France. So it provides us a lot of interesting things. And hopefully, as I'm gonna talk about in a future video coming up pretty soon, we see a lot of Kalos callbacks because ignoring how the games were, because X and Y for me has really, it's soured over the years, the generation provided us with a great region. Kalos is a wonderfully designed region. It's gorgeous in the anime. It, there's a lot of stuff they could mine with it that I think would be really good. But going back to Spain, it's right on the ocean. It borders the Atlantic and it also borders the Mediterranean Sea. So there's a lot of Pokemon that you could do based on some of the designs you would see of real life animals in this area. There's been some leaks already on the internet that show that we're gonna get a dolphin Pokemon. And listen, I love leaks just as much as the next guy, but if I had a dollar for every single time in every single generation, we got the teaser of a dolphin Pokemon finally coming to the franchise. I'd, I'd be a billionaire. <laughs> like these rumors come about every single year and they never come to be true. But the Iberian Peninsula is a really good spot to have a dolphin Pokemon. So they could do that. That would be great. There's been water and oceans in almost every other Pokemon region. So they could have done it there too, but that is something. There's also a lot of history with Spain that they could definitely pull on for a Pokemon region. Some of it is a little more dark and depressing than other ones. Well, you know, things like the Inquisition and, you know, the king and queen of, of uh, Spain sending Christopher Columbus to North America to, you know, discover America and discover a trade route to Asia. There's a lot of sailing influences that can be had with a Spanish Pokemon region. There's a lot of king and queen and royalty, monarchs and crusades. All of these things can be had in a Spanish Pokemon region, and you can draw a lot of inspiration for your Pokemon designs, for your character designs on all of that history. Of course, they're not going to go down the route of making it super dark. They're going to Pokemonize it and make it, you know, kid friendly, but there's still a lot of really cool and interesting inspiration to pull from there with history. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. But if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. There are a lot of wars in Pokemon's history. Generation one, Lieutenant Surge claims to have served in a war. Generation five, you have the fighting between the two kings of Unova. Generation six, you have the war 3000 years ago where AZ uses the ultimate weapon and in modern times, Lysander is trying to remake that weapon and use it because the world is becoming corrupted and he wants to see beauty by destroying everything. 
It's a little strange. Generation 8, you see that there is conflict, and you see that at one point, the people of the Galar region built castles to protect themselves from the giant Dynamax Pokemon. There's a lot of war. Spain has a pretty sizable history with warfare and conflict. Not only is Spain going to war with other countries in Europe, but also Spain having conflict within its own borders. You had for a very long time a Muslim kingdom that was in existence where Spain is today. At a certain point, the Christians came in and retook Muslim lands for themselves. There's a lot of religious war history here in this region. There's a lot they can pull from. I hope they don't go down the route of giving another war story for Pokemon. Even if they tie it together with another war and maybe create a larger conflict, I would like some of the history and the lore of this region to not necessarily be tied to warfare. They could do it well and they could bring in some really interesting real world themes to it, but I would just personally prefer if they didn't go down that route. The route I want them to go down when it comes to the history of Spain is the seafaring history. Not only is Spain an incredibly well-known seafaring country, but Portugal is as well. Some of the world's, some of history's most famous sailors come from Spain and Portugal. And there's a lot of really interesting and rich storytelling things that you could mine from that history. We've seen it already with Quaxley. Quaxley comes off as a sailor duck, Hopefully he evolves into something that is also reminiscent of a sailor or of maritime culture itself. I talked about that in a, in a recent video where I went over the starter Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet. If you guys didn't see that, you should definitely go check it out. I'll leave a card in the corner right here. But there's a lot they could pull from with this. One of the lore things that I would love to see them explore in Scarlet and Violet is talk about how the people of Scarlet and Violet the region of Spain and whatever it ends up getting called in the future, they are, you know, colonizers. You don't have to use the word colonizer. You don't have to get into the politics and the world history of it, but you can talk about how the people of this region went and founded lands in other places. Maybe build a new connection with a region that we don't know a ton of history about. Maybe the people of this region went to some of these regions and brought with them their history and their people and their stories. You could really mine that information. You could talk about the people of Scarlet and Violet's region being some of the first explorers of the Pokemon world, charting some of these other regions. Maybe you could make a direct reference to Hisui with Pokemon Legends Arceus just coming out and talk about some of the earliest settlers to the Hisui region didn't actually come up from Johto and Kanto like we've learned with the Celestica people in Legends Arceus, but actually landed on the shores of Hisui from the region of Scarlet and Violet. There's a ton of really interesting stuff there, a ton of history that I think they could definitely pull from. The geography is also really good. You can do a really nice mountainous area in the south of Spain that you can do. It's, 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 it could produce some really cool snowy environments, which Game Freak always likes to have in their regions. So that could be really fun for getting a bunch of new ice type Pokemon, getting some really cool mountainous themes. Pokemon kills it with their mountain and snow tracks uh, in terms of their soundtrack. Generation four did a really good job of putting that on full display. Generation seven did too with Mount Lanakila. So there's some really cool things they could pull from there. And talking about this as a completely open world Pokemon game, you could do some interesting things with the geography between Portugal in Spain. Maybe have it look a little bit different, maybe have some different culture on the shore, on the coastline, as opposed to in Spain itself. There's a lot that they can do. I want to know what you guys think. Are you dead set on Spain being the region? This video is presuming that it is based on the Iberian Peninsula, and we're, we're decently sure that it is. Do you guys have any ideas for some history they could pull from for this region, or maybe some modern things and modern Spanish culture that they could do in this region and kind of incorporate? I would love to know what you guys think down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please sure leave a like and make sure you're subscribed so you never miss the next one. With that being said, I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.